It's July 2022, and in the last week, Squarespace have launched a huge upgrade to their platform in the new Fluid Engine. The Fluid Engine breaks away from what I've often referred to as the scaffolding approach to creating websites in Squarespace built on that 12 column grid where everything is built up like a building block approach and very neat and organized in its area. I've always said it's a double-edged sword because on one hand, it keeps things working as a website should work. There is a flow to the designs. There is a discipline that can help to create professional websites in Squarespace, especially if you're not an expert in web design. This is all changed now. The new Fluid Engine, which Squarespace are really pushing you towards, will allow you to create websites in much of the same way as we can create designs in the likes of Canva. There's a lot more fluidity to the approach. There is a very flexible, almost carefree approach to the design in the new setup. I have decided to reshuffle my week around a little bit so I can spend a little bit of time getting to know the new system. And I've also decided to share my initial thoughts with you. So, what you're going to see is my first impressions. I've only literally had 10 minutes to look at the system before I started recording this mini course. We will go through over four chapters showing you how we can get the most out of this new system and some of the things to watch out for. Today, more than ever before, creative professionals are looking for ways to make the website building process faster and more enjoyable. With so many different tools available, each with its own learning curve, most designers and developers find themselves spending more time on setup and maintenance than they would like, and the results can vary wildly. In response to some considerable steps forward by Wix and Editor X, Squarespace has introduced its own new flexible design tool, the Fluid Engine. The Fluid Engine is a brand new way of building websites with Squarespace that streamlines the production process while making it even more fun, depending on your particular viewpoint on what fun is. Squarespace claims that by building the Fluid Engine from the ground up with a focus on performance and user experience, Fluid Engine is their latest innovation designed to empower creators at every level. It offers a new way to build websites that is faster, easier, and more enjoyable than ever before. Fluid Engine is a complete redesign of Squarespace web design tool, built with a focus on performance and user experience. It features a completely revamped visual editor, a new code editor, and a completely revamped website building process. The new design tool has been in development for almost two years and is Squarespace's biggest investment in the web design process to date. Pandora's box has been opened, and the shackles have been loosened. Our designers are going to love this. At the same time, this is going to increase the duration of our training courses as more flexibility often means more legwork to get up to speed. So whilst the creatives rejoice, this isn't going to be everybody's cup of tea. So let's take a look at some comparisons between the classic and fluid engine before we start jumping into Squarespace and playing around with these new effects. I've referred to Squarespace as a building block approach or a scaffolding approach to web design. I've always been a big fan of that because I felt that other platforms have sometimes tried to be too ambitious and have ended up making something that's too convoluted and it's too easy for everything to go wrong. Whilst with Squarespace, it always kept it simple and having a 12 column based building block approach allowed us to put a text block, then get an image to wrap around it. So this text block would all be one area here. We'd have another text block with the image aligned to the left. We would then be able to use spaces either side if we wanted to constrain and reduce in the width of that page. And then we could have a summary block below. I'm gonna try and do the same effect now, albeit with different lengths of text here on the right hand side. So the red lines here are outlining the text blocks. So we've got two separate ones, one with an image wrap inside it and another one with the image aligned and snapped alongside it. We were then able to move at one point to the 12 column grid. So one of 12 blocks across to adjust the size of that. Then when we move over to the fluid engine, it's all changed. Now we add in a text block and it just sits at the top left hand corner. We can then decide to move it and the grids that we can move it within are half the size of what they were before. So we've got so much more control over being able to move this image just that much as opposed to moving it a full block. 
and that may not seem like a lot to start with but it does make a huge difference to the fluidity of the layout. Also gone are spacer blocks. Before we'd need to use spacers to really get a more fluid layout within our website. Now we can see these spaces here are just areas that we don't use. So we've got a full canvas and we can decide then which sections or areas to use. We then decide to position things in. We can already see that there's an overlap. So we can overlap images and elements, text blocks, although I'd be careful about overlapping text blocks from a usability perspective. But those are features that we can now do in the new Fluid Engine. We can then take an element and then position it in layers. So we can bring this image to the foreground, much as we can do with designing the likes of Canva. We've then got this summary block in the bottom. The difference is here, we're not constrained to that content area anymore. It can really flow over the edges, right to the edge of the browser screen. We can decide to offset it here as well. So this is a new feature that's come in quite popular on a number of websites. I will try and find an example for that, where it's offset and showing that kind of carousel effect in a more fluid, less structured manner, asymmetrical. One final point to take away with this is that the mobile design setup now has been completely reconfigured. And finally, I believe that Squarespace is ready for a mobile first approach to the design. You can start in the design view now and manipulate things and then switch to the desktop view and adjust them accordingly on there. It was mobile first in name only before. Now we have seen quite a leap from Squarespace. I certainly enjoyed the first few hours I've had with the new platform. I hope you enjoy as well. Stick around for chapter one.